Recently, we've been getting a lot of calls concerning coyotes in the area. Here today with us is Jeff Westerfield from the Division of Wildlife, who will be answering some of our questions that we've been receiving. Are coyotes native to Ohio? Coyotes technically aren't native to Ohio. Uh, they weren't historically here, but uh, the range expansion came up from the south uh, back in the early 1900s. Uh, around 1970s is when we started seeing pretty regularly in Ohio though. Probably since, you know, since the 1980s, they've been in Menor. Uh, as coyotes move around a little bit, move to where they're looking for food, uh, sometimes you will see a localized area of, of an increase of the population in that localized area, but overall we think the population is relatively stable in the state. Are coyotes only found in rural areas? No, they're very common in urban areas. Pretty much every town in Ohio has coyotes in it. Um, you know, they are a very adaptable animal, so for them to be uh, able to adapt to an urban environment uh, is nothing for them. Uh, they do it very, very well. What do coyotes look like? Well, coyotes are uh, typically right around 30 to 40 pounds. Um, they're typically a kind of a gray colored um, although they will get, uh, people will confuse them for uh, German Shepherds a lot of times. So they do have a lot of that German Shepherd kind of coloring, but they can range everything from a really dark rusty red to a jet black color. So they have a real uh, wide uh, range of colors. The biggest things to look for are typically the, uh, they typically have pretty pointed ears um, and have a black tip tail. Um, you know, that, those are some of the best characteristics to look for. Should you be scared if you see a coyote in your neighborhood? Well, certainly, uh, you know, just like any other wild animal, you should give it some respect. Um, you know, wild animals can be unpredictable. Wild animals can be diseased. So it's always good, you know, regardless of what the wild animal is, whether it's a, a young bird or a coyote or a baby raccoon, you always give it the respect of being a wild animal. Um, that doesn't mean you should fear it. Um, obviously, uh, if it's causing issues like growling at you, um, running at you or something like that, doesn't again doesn't matter what the animal is you want to get out of that situation and really just notify you know police department would be the first uh, call you should make just let them know of what's going on uh, and then certainly you know giving the division of wildlife a call as well and letting us know uh, what happened um, it's not a really common thing for them to really be aggressive so um, you know uh, really it's not anything to really be fearful of uh, if they're just going through your backyard they're again you know because they can adapt to urban environments they pretty much keep to themselves very well, and that's uh, their general trend. So should I worry that coyotes will attack my pet? You know, if you've got a pet and you're gonna let it outside, you should always be mindful of what you're doing. You're, you're putting it outside. There are a lot of different things that can happen. And certainly, you know, as a pet owner myself, you know, you, you, know, you wanna be protective of your pets. Um, when you're talking in regard to, to coyotes, um, you know, the biggest issue we see with coyotes is the pets tend, you know, the coyote is either in the backyard or appears in the backyard and, and the pet wants to uh, run after it, especially a dog will want to run after the coyote, kind of chasing it. With pets, it's, it's good to be mindful of that. And so anytime you let them outside, the best thing, and it doesn't really matter what time of the year, it's good to always have them, you know, contained either inside of a fenced yard or on some type of lead. If a dog's chasing a coyote, its first instinct is to turn and run and uh, get out of the situation. It doesn't want to fight, you know, it's it going to end up expending a lot of energy to do that. So there's no reason for it to have to want to do that. It just wants to do its thing. Um, and that's primarily just, you know, hunt for the little rodents and, and mice and stuff that make up the big part of its diet. Um, or in the cases like in December and January, we see an increase of movement of coyotes for, for breeding purposes. Certainly, the coyote is gonna defend himself, uh, you know, if, if something's chasing it. Um, and so in that instance, you know, a dog would be instigating the whole situation. So we probably get maybe a couple dozen calls a year in regard to, to coyotes and pets, um, but m very seldom do we have any, you know, uh, you know, uh, situations where the people saw, you know, the coyote came, they saw the coyote come after the pet. Are coyotes a danger to cats that are outside? Uh, coyotes, that's about the one domestic animal that coyotes do sometimes uh, kill for food. Um, so uh, there is a little bit of a risk if you let your cat outside. The best rule of thumb is to keep your cat inside. Um, cats have a lot of other issues that they uh, can pose being outside. Uh, they 
can transmit disease. They can also have an effect on small bird populations um, and also those rodent populations as well. So um, the best rule of thumb with cats is to keep them inside. Just know that if you do let your cat outside, uh, it does run a risk of potentially, uh, you know, being a meal for a coyote. Um, but at the same time, they also run that same risk of getting injured by another domestic dog that's outside, another cat, a raccoon, or getting hit by a car as well. So there's a lot of negatives for a cat being outside. The best rule of thumb is to keep it inside. What do coyotes typically hunt and eat? Their primary diet is rodents. Uh, so mice, moles, voles, uh, they, they really focus on, on the small rodents, easy to catch and typically there's a lot of them. Um, they will also uh, take care of roadkill that's on, on the roadways. So the third part of their diet is really grasses. Um, just like us, we need uh, vegetation in our diet, so do they. So they'll spend a lot of time eating grasses as well. That makes up the vast majority of their diet. Do coyotes typically travel and hunt in packs? Um, they will you know, be out hunting together, but they're really solo hunters. Uh, they want to, you know, uh, what they kill is for them and it's, it's for their food. Uh, they don't do coordinated attacks really. So, um, you know, they may all be out there moving around at the same time hunting, but they're not really doing it uh, together like a, in a pack sense. Coyotes are really social animals, so uh, they spend a lot of time howling with each other just to kind of let everybody know where they are and what's going on. Um, but, you know, coyote howling isn't them looking for a meal. It isn't them, you know, talking to each other to do coordinated attacks and, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, it's really just them socializing with each other uh, and just in general, they're, they're much like humans. We like to talk a lot and so uh, they just like to communicate with each other on a regular basis. Do coyotes carry any sort of diseases? Yeah, they do carry diseases. Um, you know, one of the things that I always say is that people don't rec really understand why you take your pets to the vet uh, to get vaccinated. That's for coyotes and other wild animals. So uh, especially dog owners will get um, uh, canine distemper shots for their dogs, partially because there's, there's canines out in the wild that carry distemper. So you want to, you know, you're protecting your pet from those diseases. So we do know uh, coyotes do carry um, and do get distemper. Um, that's probably the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, diseases they get. Um, they are also potentially susceptible to rabies and um, you know, this area around Lake County uh, has dealt with rabies in the past and uh, it's nothing to say that it wouldn't pop up again. Does rabies or distemper cause any sort of aggression in coyotes? It is a neurologic, it can affect their brain, so um, it's hard to say exactly how each animal will uh, behave when it gets sick, um, but uh, one of the uh, symptoms of both rabies and distemper is they can be aggressive. Um, so certainly, again, if you notice an animal that's being aggressive, stuff like it's growling at you, it's approaching you, you're, you're yelling, screaming, clapping your hands, and it's not moving away, you, know, you want to get yourself out of that situation as quick as possible. And again, give the police department a call to let them know that there's an animal that's not acting right. And, that, and really, those, those rules apply to any wild animal because every mammal can get rabies and many different uh, wild animals can get uh, distemper. So um, anytime you have an animal that's not acting right, just notify the police department. Let them know that something's, you know, something's going on in animals uh, being a little aggressive. What should someone do if a coyote is near them? Well, if a coyote is near them, the biggest thing is just let it know you're there. Um, it very well probably knows that anyways um, because they typically know their surroundings pretty well and pay attention. You know, it'll perk up usually, look at them, and then usually kind of turn around and kind of just slowly uh, walk out of the area. Um, you know, again, uh, even if it doesn't turn and run or turn and walk away, as long as it kind of, you know, you know it's there, he knows you're there, just keep your distance. Again, you know, probably, you know, you don't want to ever approach a wild animal, just kind of keep your distance. You really don't have any concerns of coyotes attacking you. Um, you know, uh, we get, you know, people all the time that, you know, we talk to that say, hey, you know, I know somebody that got attacked. but. Um, more often than not, those are usually, you know, uh, uh, fables or, or myths that, that are, are being promoted. Um, you know, in the whole history of Ohio, uh, we really only know of one verified coyote attack on a person, um, and that coyote was sick. Uh, it was uh, killed after the, the, it injured the person. Uh, it, it just simply bit him on the leg. Uh, no major, you know, it didn't, you know, uh, wasn't like 
go in to kill the person or anything else, just ran up, bit, bit the guy in the leg. Um, and so they worked to get uh, that coyote tested and, and it did come back positive for rabies. So, um, you know, again, when an animal's sick, everything gets thrown out the window. Uh, all the rules go out the window. Um, but uh, coyotes, as a general rule of thumb, do not attack people. A lot of the calls that I'm receiving, people are wondering if they should be concerned if they see a coyote during the daytime. You always want to, you know, kind of, you know, do a quick assessment of what's going on. So, uh, you know, if you see a coyote during the daytime, usually it's just fine. Uh, it's just out there running around. Uh, just it could be a situation where uh, maybe it was in under a log in the woods and somebody went walking by and got it up and moving. So that's why he's out during the day. It could be that he's just hungry. And so he's, you know, uh, just like us, so we sometimes we get the munchies late at night, even though we are daytime creatures. Uh, you know, sometimes they just, you know, get, get hungry and want to go get a, a bite to eat. Um, and then also, uh, depending on the time of year, if it's breeding season, um, then you may see them out more, uh, you know, just spending more time looking for uh, mates. Uh, we will also see some ac extra activity during when the pups are leaving the den. Um, so a lot of times we'll see some activity of them being out during the day just because they're spending more time. Those pups are getting bigger. They need more food to feed them. So they have to catch more mice and, uh, and that kind of thing to, to feed, feed the pups. You can have several different family units within an area like this. Um, and then again, those family units will move around quite a bit. It really depends on you know, how much food resources are around, how many other coyotes are in that area, to how much uh, space they'll utilize. The potential is always there to have coyotes in, you know, in your backyard in Menor. Um, and the biggest thing is just to kind of you know, follow the rules uh, for, for being outside. Can a coyote jump a six foot fence? Well, they can't probably jump a six foot fence, but they can climb. But they're, if they come to a barrier like a fence, their uh, first really uh, route of trying to get across that is really to go under the fence. Um, so, you know, they'll look for holes in the fence or, or dig to get under. So, um, you know, it's a good uh, rule of thumb, you know, if you've got a fenced in backyard with, with pets, is just make sure that fence is maintained and you should be good. What type of habitat do coyotes reside in? Well, they're, they're primarily uh, hanging out in the woods is where they tend to like to hang out, but they will adapt to their surroundings. So uh, sometimes you'll find them using uh, concrete piles, um, you know, uh, areas under decks and sheds, uh, porches, that kind of stuff. So um, they're, they're pretty, uh, you know, adaptable to where they can, uh, you know, live. Um, but they t most times they like to be in the woods. There are plenty of, of coyotes in downtown Cleveland. So uh, every, every urban uh, community, uh, I would be safe to say, probably has coyotes, at least if not permanently living there on a fairly frequently uh, used basis going through that town and community. So when you come into an environment like Menor that has a lot of uh, green space, a lot of you know, uh, wooded areas, they do a very good job of kind of keeping themselves out of the limelight for the most part. Most times when you're seeing them, it's because of the, the biology that's going on uh, with uh, you know, them breeding. That's our, December and January are prime times for getting sightings because they're moving around so much uh, for breeding purposes and some of those youngsters are getting kicked out and told to kind of leave the nest uh, to go find a new home. So uh, they're moving around a lot trying to you know, find their little place in the, in the world. Are coyotes considered a nuisance animal? So, you know, my rule of thumb is that if you've got a particular coyote causing a particular problem, then deal with it. There's lots of other coyotes out there. So uh, it's kind of what I call the revolving door. If you remove one coyote, um, you're probably going to get another one to replace it. There are instances and in some uh, research out there that shows that if you actually remove an alpha, so the head male, head female of the family unit, that sometimes that actually, you know, now you've got a bunch of coyotes out on the fringes that are looking to become that alpha uh, for, you know, because that, that other one was removed, that actually can actually increase the, uh, you know, coyote movement and, and uh, in some regards, the density uh, for a period of time until that all gets sorted out. So again, as long as you, you know, kind of run with the rule of thumb, deal with a particular coyote that's causing a, a particular problem, 
um, then you should be okay to go ahead and, and uh, address that. Is it necessary for the city to organize a program aimed at controlling the coyote population? Um, really the biggest uh, response from the city is just to be there uh, for the residents for the issues that are not normal. Um, so, you know, with you know, the police department uh, responding to issues that uh, where they've got a, a uh, especially where there's a, a repetitive problem in a certain area, uh, responding to an issue where there's a coyote being aggressive or something like that. But aside from that, there's really no uh, probably need for the city to do any control programs or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, really it kind of, because again, the general rule of thumb is a particular problem, a coyote causing a particular problem are the ones that you deal with. There's really no reason to do any large scale management of the coyotes. Um, you know, they really keep to themselves. Um, so, you know, uh, as long as they're doing that, really the, the best uh, course of action is just to stay the course that, that they've been doing. What are the coyotes' place in the ecosystem and what would happen if they were to go away? Uh, you know, certainly if coyotes were completely removed out of the system, um, we would probably see uh, an increase in fox, uh, which is just another smaller canid, uh, really acts the same as a coyote. Um, and then you would also probably see a little bit in the interim there an, an increase in the rodent population um, because obviously they're not uh, taking care of that problem. Um, and again, they, they take care of a fair amount of, of dead things that are out there. So, you know, not necessarily just roadkill, but, you know, things die because they're sick or old, um, you know, all kinds of different animals. So they'll take advantage of those animals that are out there. So there's really no easy way to remove a coyote from the ecosystem. They're here, they're here to stay. Um, so, you know, as long as they keep to themselves, you know, uh, we should uh, be good to go as far as uh, uh, allowing them to live amongst us. Can you coyote proof your yard? Well, you can't really coyote proof it, but you can do a lot of things to kind of deter a coyote from wanting to be in your yard. So definitely, uh, you know, making sure there's no food sources out there for it, uh, such as pet food and that kind of stuff. Making sure that, you know, any bird feeders or stuff like that that you're using are, you know, are clean and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, leftover seed on the ground. Um, and making sure that if you've got a fence that it's maintained, you know, stuff like that can go a long ways to keep coyotes, you know, away from your house. If you've got uh, brush piles and that kind of stuff, it, you know, those do sometimes provide some benefits for other wild animals, but it can also provide a home for a coyote as well. So um, you just got to really, uh, you know, uh, kind of really take take a you know a second to look back at your property and and you know see if there are. Uh, things that you could or couldn't do to maybe deter it from being there. And, and certainly if you ever have questions, you can always contact us at the Division of Wildlife and we can talk to you about uh, your particular property uh, and, and give you some ideas of what you can do to uh, maybe uh, keep coyotes away from your property on a, on a less frequent basis. Well, thank you so much for coming in today to answer our questions. Yeah, no problem. And you know, if any residents have any further uh, questions that they have, they can certainly uh, either look at our website at wildohio.gov or they can give a call at our district office at 330-644-2293 and we'll be able to answer any questions that they have.